I see some people who are ready for toys. I'm also ready for toys. Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday. It's time for toys. Yes. Um, as promised, I will show some interesting new things I got in the mail um, in a minute after, uh, after this. So digging through the toy closet, and yes, there is a toy closet. We've talked before about the DC Multiverse line uh, by Mattel, which obviously Mattel no longer has the DC license, so you won't find any more of these. Uh, the Multiverse line, they did a bunch of 6-inch figures and then 4-inch figures, which I preferred. Um, most of them had to do with Batman in one form or another, either comic book related or movie related or video game related. Uh, Arsenal Royce UK. So it's it's interesting because at the same time, Mattel lost the license. Well, not at the same time, but then shortly after, uh, DC Collectibles slash DC Direct closed down. So now the the main people who are making DC toys uh, for kids, it's uh, uh, which one is it? Spin Master. Yes, I believe it's Spin Master. And then the more collectible side is McFarlane, who are now doing the... So that's where you'll get, like, the really comic book-specific related or inspired figures, you know, more of those six-inch stuff, um, the collect and connect type of things. So from Batman Arkham Origins... Now, again, I've never played any of these Batman games, but I understand that there is this... Um, mode where you can what is it detective mode where you can look through things and that is a pretty cool action figure now this is bane um if you didn't know it was bane and you have never played the video game you might look at this figure and say who's that i don't know because obviously for the game they went with a a look for bane that's a little bit different than the comic books uh, and especially in this view it's like well, he's like a glow-in-the-dark skeleton guy, but that's that's cool, too. Uh, it doesn't give you a whole bunch of information, which is fine. Uh, it gives you the, the game and the detective mode here. I, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard the, the games are good. I just, I just don't really play video games. And then it says, Bane, real name, unknown. Special abilities, master assassin, incredible strength, and intelligence. So, and that's something that people sometimes, especially if they're not super comic book nerds, forget or don't realize is that, well, yes, Bane is a huge hulking brute type guy. Uh, he's actually super, super smart. He's come up with all these crazy schemes worked with a lot of other villains he's not like just a big tough guy that's right he broke the bat I will not do an impression of Tom Hardy Bane I will leave that to Bert so now this is a four inch scale, so it's a bit taller than a three and three quarter inch figure, although Bane is appropriately huge anyway. Now, this is a this is a repaint of an existing figure, so they did do one of these in the standard colors of the video game. Um, I don't have that because it I didn't really care. <clears throat> so you'll see there is there's a lot of sculpted detail which again, as we often talk about, is not picked out by the paint at all. But at least here, there's a reason. So you can see his jacket is all detailed. And he's got some copyright information there on the back, which is usually somewhere. Uh, there's a texture to his pants. Lots of, lots of sculpted detail. He's got... I assume these are some kind of grenades. I don't know. Or are, are they bottles of uh, 
Venom, maybe. I'm not, not sure. Another little one over there. He's got pouches. And boots. So let's see. He does have an articulated neck, although it's mostly blocked by this high collar. But he can turn his head from side to side. It does look pretty creepy with, with the like no eyeballs. And then we've got ball jointed shoulders, which again are restricted by the top of his jacket there, but give him a decent a decent range of motion. There are elbows. And even wrists. He does have the one open hand here, but he didn't come with an accessory. But if you have other stuff lying around, you can give him something to to beat up Batman with. Uh, he has a waist. And then here he has... We've looked at figures with this kind of joint before. So the... The hip can they can move out and then also forward and back, so it kind of essentially it makes up a ball joint even though it's it's not actually a ball joint it's just it's two different joints. But as you see, this little rack of containers severely restricts that motion unless you want to bend that and it it is loose so it will bend out. But as I tell my children. Uh, if you have a toy, the more you push on something like that, uh, the looser it's going to get <laughs> and may come off one day. And then two over here, this little one, you can kind of get his leg behind it. But again, I wouldn't want wouldn't to push too hard on that little tiny extra piece right there. Hey, Solkatu. We've got knees. And then there's no no ankle articulation, but that's to be expected. And there are tiny holes on both feet. So again, he didn't come with a base, but if you have extra bases or playset kind of things, you can use that. So all in all, it's a little little pigeon toad, actually. But that's okay. So yeah, he's big. He's bulky. Except for the pigeon toe thing, he stands pretty well he looks like a Halloween version of Triple H I can see that they did a good a good job with the uh, like the blousing of his shirt like it kind of folds down and there's he's a little bit wider around the middle a little chunky I like it he's got pockets are those pockets on his shirt? Yeah, he's got pockets on the front of his jacket too, which bulks it out a little bit. But he's not like super streamlined, which is nice. I like it. Yeah, the colors almost give him like an apocalypse vibe as well. Now, one thing that would have really increased the quality of this figure is if they had done this simple skeleton paint on the back too, like that's something that they could have done that wouldn't have been a huge extra thing, but what are you going to do? I mean, when you display your action figures, you're only looking at them from the front anyway. Oh, did I miss? Oh, there's, I missed. There's another joint here to rotate The lower legs. Well, I mean, it, it rotates just above the knee, but essentially it's for the lower legs. So that's cool. Although, again, with <laughs> the more articulation you pack into a leg, the less useful it is if the ankles don't articulate, right? Because the more crazy things that your leg is doing, if the ankle can't move to have a... To basically to rotate the surface of the bottom of the foot, well... You know, that's not, he's not going to be able to stand up like that. And it's always fun on these kind of things where, like, you have really, really strict lines in your deco. It's like, okay, well, I got to make sure that when I display this, that the leg is perfectly lined up so that the image works. 
But yeah. I like it. I know they did... I know they did a Batman in this, like, detective mode. So he was... I think he was, like, purple and light blue. Some some kind of deco like that. Uh, this is not glow-in-the-dark paint. It looks like it. And it should be. Let me double check. Yeah, I smashed it up to my eyes and it does not glow in the dark. I suppose you could paint over it with glow in the dark paint. We have some somewhere. Cool. So that is Bane. Yes, even skeletons need pockets. Ladies need pockets. Skeletons need pockets. So as you know, I went away this past weekend, and when I came back, oh, the skeleton thugs, <laughs> uh, and when I came back, there was a, a big mail call. They had a bunch of packages waiting for us. Among them, got this thing, a lot of stuff moving around in here. So this is from my, I've talked about it before, but There's a there's a... Heroclix forum called HC Realms, and of course I'm in the Secret Santa there. So I can't open this yet. I have to wait because we all open it up on the same day. But um, it came from very far away. Fraserburg in the UK. So that's cool. The package I sent out for this also went to the UK, but a different location. It says it, in, but I do get a hint because it has customs. It says plastic figures and poker chips. Interesting. So again, can't open that to me. Then I got a package I've been expecting from Hasbro. Now, as you all know, I do reviews for figures.com and occasionally I get sent review samples from companies. So Hasbro... Hasbro's, let's say, let's say they're picky with their review samples. They don't send out, they don't send out a ton unless you're like a really big outlet. They tend to bounce around and support different, um, different toy news and review websites. So it's not like guaranteed that figures.com is always going to get stuff. They tend to do like really big packages. So like Mandalorian, uh, a few weeks ago, they sent out like a massive box to a bunch of people and it had, you know, like a toy blaster and a bunch of figures and Legos and like the whole big, big to do. Uh, well, Legos, not Hasbro, but you get the point. So anyway, there was an email that went out a couple weeks ago asking figures.com if we wanted a certain upcoming figure and the editor was kind enough to see if I wanted it and I said yes. So now I haven't reviewed it yet, so I'm not actually going to open it, but I can show you all. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. So this is the new, their first Dungeons & Dragons action figure <clears throat> by Hasbro. Obviously in conjunction with Wizard of the Coast, which Hasbro owns. Uh, so this is pretty cool. It's a Hasbro Pulse exclusive which I forgot, actually, and I went online last night to look around to see when it was coming out, and I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> I went to Amazon, I went to Big Bad Toy Store, I was like, how come I can't find any listing for this? It's like, oh, yeah, because you can only buy this on Hasbro's official uh, selling site. So yeah, so this just came in, like I said, I'm not going to open it now, I have to do the whole photography and everything, but um, it looks, packaging is great. They did a bunch of I believe this is new artwork. I don't remember seeing this anywhere before, but um, we've got, so it's, this is just a sleeve on the outside. Um, although it was taped on, which was kind of annoying. I did have to cut the tape just to remove the sleeve. But yes, this is Drizzt Doerden, the drow and his panther. Now I say Gwenwavar. I know there are other ways that some people say it. Um, six inch scale figure. So in theory, he'll fit in with your Marvel Legends. Uh, we got a lot of reflections here, sorry. But um, yeah, figure looks great. 
Obviously, we've got two different heads and two different hair styles. You can swap those all out. Uh, the gridded teeth one isn't bad, but I'm probably going to go with the closed mouth. Yeah, it, actually, it was pretty cool. I was like, oh, a d20, nice. We have his classic swords. Now, we could get into endless arguments about this kind of stuff, like, is that the traditional shape of a scimitar? Eh, whatever, it's fine. Uh, we got a couple extra hands, so you can do different poses. His, uh, the little unicorn symbol of his patron goddess. Uh, what is it, Mia Leaky? Something like that. Sword effects, it's hard to see. And then, of course, the figurine of wondrous power that becomes a fully articulated... Uh, Gwen Wivar. Apparently there are also cards in this box. I don't know what those are for. So I'll find out when I open it. And yeah, and again, another new piece of artwork on the back. Which is pretty neat. So yeah, at least packaging is good. And yes, yeah, Solkatu, that is definitely the hope that, um, that this does well. And that it's the first in a new line of, of uh, action figures from, you know, I mean, man, the sky's the limit as far as I'd love to see Dragonlance characters, especially. And, I, and of course, I'm going to talk about all this in the review, but I love to see Dragonlance characters. Um, I mean, there's so much they can mine from just, right, yeah, exactly. From I mean, they could go back and give us figures like updated figures from like the old LJN line from the cartoon, you know, cause they're just, you know, make them sort of generic D and D characters if they don't want to use the same names or anything um, all the way. Yeah. Through the iconic characters from all the different places. We need a Strahd action figure, um, you know, give us monsters, give us, you know, larger sets. It's interesting to me that they did this in the six inch scale. Obviously six inch scale is really popular. Again, you can use it with your Marvel Legends and things like that. But it is limiting when we when we come to things like creatures and monsters uh, because those obviously are gonna be much larger. I don't know if we're ever gonna get actual dragons because they're gonna be so big and they're gonna be so expensive. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, we can, I mean, yeah, there's so many, so many books, novels, and everything else that uh, build a figure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, like I said, this sells well, and, you know, they're encouraged by it. So, I've been going around, the, since since I got this in, I've been going around the house uh, looking for all of my Drizzt-related things. So, I have a stack of novels, because, again, I need all this stuff for photography for this thing. So I got a stack of novels, and I am going to talk about, this figure's a little bit controversial when it comes to the skin tone. Now, even in the artwork, it's changed over the years, and it's interesting, too, that some of the art on the novels has been, has been a little weird. So, like, uh-oh. So on the very first, <laughs> on the first novel to feature Driz, uh, he's just, he's a, a little swarthy, but you can't really tell much. And then a lot of the art, he's just kind of weird looking, like a, like an older fellow and like the hair is really severely pulled back. And then you get stuff like this. I'm glad they didn't make the figure look like this. That's a choice. And again, there's there's one of those. <laughs> yeah, where's our Caddy Bree figure? Uh, so again, and the descriptions even in the books have changed from Drow being like jet black skin with the with the really brightly colored eyes to 
you know, more of this like gray, grayish, purplish kind of scale. So, you know, they had to. Um, oh, over here. Uh, it's uh, it's complicated. <laughs> their relationship <laughs> sometimes and then like they've died and come back it's it, it's Dungeons and Dragons the whole thing I don't I, how how many novels are they up to in this series by now uh R.A. Salvatore he's obviously he's he's milking this these characters for all they're worth I think there's something like 20 books probably more um, I, I read and collected them for a while and then stopped. Um, Rabbit Wombat, don't, you don't have to feel weird. That's fine. You don't, you don't have to love everything. Um, I'm, I've been a fan of D&D for, for a very long time, but, um, I've, you know, I've played a little bit here and there. They're not all great additions. Are there, and there have been different editions. That's the other thing, uh, Rabbit Wombat. You might you might go you might find going back that you might like an edition that is older, potentially. And uh, Critical Role, let's say, a lot of people like Critical Role, but not everybody. Um, I've never, I'm not a huge fan, but. I appreciate what you know the people are trying to do with it. Obviously, it's wildly successful in some circles, but it, you know it's a thing. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna do my photography of all this. And, oh yeah, so I have obviously I have novels. I have some graphic novels that they did of some of these. Um, I've got. They did. So there is actually a Drizz action figure. It's this one. Uh, it's a Creon. It's not Lego. It's the for, <laughs> for a couple of years, Hasbro tried to do their own Lego-like creations called Creos, and the little figures were called Creons. So this is the official Drizzed Creon, which is just... I mean, it's all right. I like the scimitar shape more uh, here than I do on the action figure. <laughs> to me, this is what scimitars should look like, but that's okay. Yeah, exactly. These were most of these were Transformer GI Joe. They did some Star Trek, which were weird. And then yeah, they did a couple of they did a a, a line of these little D and D ones where you would get one figure and then like a little terrain feature. And I think Drizzt was the only named character in that. I don't remember. Yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, they just looked for a name that uh, that nobody else was using. Like, Creo, Creo, Creon. There you go. That'll work. Rapid Walmart, that's interesting. That you're not big into fantasy stuff. I wonder if you just haven't been exposed. Because even within fantasy stories, there is such a wide array of styles and and other things. Um, I, you know, I wonder if you would like the Black Company series that I've talked about before. So then I got this box. Now somebody reached out to me and I checked out his stuff and it's super, super cool. So in the world of 3D printing, there's a, a an outfit out there. Uh, if you look it up, if you're interested, in it, I'm going to talk about this more on Friday for Figure Friday, uh, but Stone Temple Studios is an outfit who's doing some cool 3D printing stuff. So we have a base, we have parts, and what this is, again, f sort of filling in the debacle that was Palladium books in their Robotech. So this is a Zentradi shuttle. This 
Now again, it's a it's a essentially a raw 3D print printed in two parts. It needs a little bit of TLC, clean up this edge, um, obviously glue it together, work on the seams a bit, do a little bit of trimming, but that's a pretty cool design. Got some neat little details here. It's a little, well, if I had more light on, you could see more of the details. Now this is done on a traditional printer, so you can see like the striations, but you know, that's fine. So yeah, this is cool. And then it, we just have to do a little work to attach it to the base, but definitely something that, yeah, yeah, exactly. And this was, yeah, this was on the show. So yeah, I'm looking forward to working on this. Here it is in scale with a Veritech. And over here on, like I said, on Stone Temple Studios, if you go to their Facebook, I think there's a group for it, but um, he's working on a full-size garfish, well, full-size, uh, large-scale garfish ship from the REF, from the uh, the third generation of the Sentinels, and it looks amazing. Yeah, and so what there are, there are some different techniques that people do on these these kind of three D prints where it does have these texture lines, and there are different kinds of like primers, especially that are slightly gap filling. Yeah, like filler paint, so you can prime it in that, and then it kind of smooths it out without losing the shapes. So I'll definitely be looking into that for this. So yeah, I'm excited. Check this out. And definitely do some promotion for Stone Temple Studios. Like I said, I'll talk about that, about that more on um, Friday. Yeah, Sokatu, exactly. So again, this is on a traditional 3D printer, which uses the, essentially it's plastic filament. And it's relatively quick. It's rel It's super easy. Uh, it's You can sit right next to something that's printing, and you're not going to die of anything uh, but the detail only can get so extreme and you get these lines because it's literally just laying down plastic as it goes now resin printing is a whole different animal uh, resin you can get much much greater and crisper details because the way resin printing works it's it's crazy but <laughs> And I don't know if Zardoz is here, but he can talk about this more as well. Um, I'm sure some of you are also into 3D printing. But in, in resin 3D printing, there's a vat of liquid resin on the bottom. And then your build plate goes down into the resin. So it, builds, it actually builds it upside down. And as it builds, the plate rises. And there's a series of ultraviolet lights essentially like lasers underneath that shoot into the resin and cure the resin, the liquid resin into solid uh, in exactly the right places as the build plate is moving up and building the model down <laughs> as it's coming up. It's crazy. Um, like I said, we actually, we have a resin 3D printer. It's still in the box. <laughs> Hopefully one day we can get it up and running. Uh, I can't wait. But yeah, th uh, resin 3D printing is crazy. And they're, obviously they're making leaps and bounds in the technology. Now, unfortunately, while you can get much greater detail, because again, it's like this system of lasers essentially carving out the resin as it's solidifying. Um, resin is highly toxic, cancer-causing, smells awful. All of these really bad things. So to do resin printing, you have to take a bunch of extra precautions that you do not need to do with plastic printing. Um, so it's like I said, it's just kind of a whole different animal. And that's why we especially, um, we are taking a great amount of precautions. Uh, it's not something we want to do in the house anywhere around our children. So we're lucky enough to have a garage behind our house and uh, the previous residents had added a little room onto the outside of the garage that was like a, a storage room 
And we just use it for storage as well, but we're like, hey, if we're gonna do 3D printing and we have this little room, um, we might as well make that our 3D printing room. So it's gonna be, we're putting in ventilation and uh, all this other stuff. Oh, no, I thought of that. I thought of that MX8, but uh, this address is my like publicly available um, PO box. So, <laughs> but thank you. I, I did think about that. And I, co I covered the, uh, the sender's address. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know. One day, one day I'll get to it. And yeah, Ro, um, people have adapted the technology to print a bunch of other things. Yeah, there, there's metal 3D printing. Uh, there are certain 3D printing machines that can print in, uh, in like, or basically organic materials. So you can print um, chocolate or sugar and make things. It's, it's wild. Absolutely wild. All right, let's see. What else do we have here today? We got a DC guy. Let's do a Marvel guy. Captain America, flesh printing. Actually, there is, there in, in the biomedical world, there is some sort of, um, yeah, essentially flesh printing. There, that is something that they're working on. So we've looked at movie-related action figures before. They often come with a bunch of goofy stuff, partly because they're made for kids, partly to justify higher price tags. So here we have Precision Strike Winter Soldier. Now, anytime you have a toy line that's made for kids and has a bunch of extra crap, one thing that happens is you get a lot of added text and verbiage on your packages. So yes, we have Captain America the Winter Soldier. It's also Avengers Initiative. It's also Super Soldier Gear. And it's not just Winter Soldier, but it's Precision Strike Winter Soldier. And of course you have the little ad for the launches the rocket, all this other gear. So the gimmick for this line specifically was that there was a Captain America helmet that you could buy. Size for kids, I don't think it would fit on me. And then all of this goofy, all these goofy accessories could attach onto the helmet, <laughs> which made it even more goofy looking. So this rocket launcher, which is, you know, it's oversized for the figure, not by too much. Uh, you could attach it to the side of your helmet and then shoot rockets at people. I mean, hey, I'm sure some kid out there absolutely loved it. Uh, let's see what we have here. In the fight for freedom, Captain America battles foes packing an array of diabolical weapons. Fortunately, S.H.I.E.L.D. outfits Cap with high-tech gear fit for a super soldier. Yeah, Solkatsu, the toys order, family, genus, and species. I We have a toy. A friend of mine got a, a toy for our kids it's uh, made for kids, but it has just the worst branding on it. The front of the package has like five different names and titles, and it's this by this and this, and it's just like, you got to make this stuff clear. Ro, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have that, uh, <laughs> I don't have that, that helmet. So another interesting thing about this figure so when you're making toys or any collectibles based on an existing property 3d printed right <laughs> we're going to 3d print everything So when you're dealing with action figures, or like I said, any sort of collectibles based on a, an existing property, like say you wanted to make, say you, a person with a toy company, wanted to make this figure. Well, first of all, you have to get, you have to get the license, right? You have to call up Marvel and say, I want to make toys 
I want to license your designs. And Marvel would say, okay, you're going to give us a billion dollars and then you can sell toys based on our designs. Um, you also need to get everything cleared with our legal teams and our creative teams and go by all these schedules and blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. But then even once you have the license, say you want to make action figures based on characters from a movie. Well, having just the license, that's not all you need because you also, it's a whole separate world dealing with actor licenses or likenesses rather. Yes, we'll cut to exactly what I was just about to talk about. So when you make figures that you can put in a mask, you don't have to worry about actor likeness. And that becomes really important when you're dealing with certain actors who don't sign off their likeness. Um, I don't know if that's the case with Sebastian Stan, but um, probably not. But oftentimes when you have movies like like the Marvel movies or Star Wars movies, when an actor signs up to do those movies, it's part of the contract that basically you just sign your likeness away and they can license it out however they want. Um, If you're a big enough actor, you can get specific clauses where you control your likeness and they actually have to come to you and get things approved um, or don't give your likeness at all. That's why you'll see uh, if you go on eBay and you search certain actors uh, who don't allow their likeness to be made into toys, uh, you'll find a lot of people like sculptors at home uh, making their own sculpts of those actors' heads that then people can buy and stick on other action figures. Uh, what, what are some of those, some of the ones that, that we see a lot? Uh, Bruce Willis. There aren't a lot of Bruce Willis toys. There were a couple more in recent years when he did the G.I. Joe movies, his cameos in those, but um, that's one that's that's a little bit more rare. Tom Cruise, yeah, exactly. But again, when you make this toy, no likeness required. All right, so what do we got here? This toy has a pretty wild sculpt. I mean, there's a lot, a ton, a ton of sculpted detail. There are a couple of different colors going on in the paint, but they're pretty muddled. So from far away, far away, it just looks brown and black. Um, it is nice they broke it up a little bit with the brown and then the black sections. Again, any kind of wash would bring this out, except it's it's already so dark here. I guess you could dry brush it with something. He's got... Yeah, there's a nice texture to the pants. I like that. Articulation is a little weird. So he's got a ball-jointed neck, but because of the, because of the hair... Can't really angle, it can only, but it can turn side to side decently enough. We have ball jointed shoulders, ball jointed elbows, no wrists, which is fine on a figure this scale. The waist is not articulated, which is odd, but that's okay. Or if it is, this one is stuck. I don't want to break it. There are ball jointed. So one of the joints I don't really like on action figures, especially in this scale. So there's a ball joint here in the hip, and then there's immediately this joint here. And yes, it gives it a wide range of motion, but it's so unsightly to have those big old balls (laughs) right there. I don't love it. We have ball jointed knees and no ankles. Yeah, so this is a has a good, definitely a good amount of articulation. Uh, I do wish he had come with some in scale <laughs> accessories rather than just this piece of garbage. And again, some like it has connectors for the helmet as well as I guess you could put it on his arm big old ball joints (laughs) exactly 
yeah, I'm definitely not going to use this with the action figure when I put this on display. Maybe this will go into the, the pile of uh, accessories for, for our orcs. <laughs> from Beverly Hills Cop 3. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. And I always wonder on these, like, is this a mold that they made for some other toy at some point? Is this a reissue? Was this, a, was this on a G.I. Joe toy once? Who knows? Who knows? It's pretty ugly. At least they gave it a couple different colors, so that's nice. Yeah, the scale is... I mean, there's there's no no scale to this. Uh, talking about likenesses here, let me grab something else. Sometimes, not dealing with the likeness and giving us a masked figure... Uh, it gives us a cool alternative thing. So again, we yeah, have Roadblock from G.I. Joe. That, that's appropriate. So in another Marvel line for... I'm not sure exactly which movie this was. It was one of the Avengers-specific movies. But again, similar similar scale. But we got this. Now what the heck is this? <clears throat> So this is Hawkeye. Clearly not based on anything we saw on the screen in the MCU. Jeez, the phone is blowing up. I I don't I don't even know if this is was there ever a comic design? It's Ultimate, okay. Um yeah, I, I didn't never really read any Ultimate comics, but that makes sense. So yeah, so this was in an MCU line um i i'm sure it didn't sell very well because what kid is going to look at this and say oh hawkeye why well, i don't know what kid is going to look for a jeremy renner hawkeye figure anyway but um but kind of a cool but kind of a cool look for an action figure at least even if it has no relation to uh the character on screen and they didn't have to get jeremy renner's like this <laughs> which i i don't know how much it costs but uh Oh, thank you so much for the donation. We're still working toward that gladiator tank. Appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think about Jeremy Renner toys. Now, when we talk about likenesses and even people who are picky about their likeness, all of that goes out the window when we talk about high-level uh, collectibles from overseas so even people who are super picky who you don't often see things made if it's a cool character in a sci-fi or especially a marvel or dc film there's almost certainly going to be a hot toys of it and um so yeah there are all sorts of there's i'm pretty sure, yeah no there are definitely hawkeyes from hot toys and every other character in in all of those movies but of course, Hot Toys are 12 inch tall, 12 inch figure scale. So a lot of them are even more, uh, even larger and more expensive and um, like insanely detailed and insanely expensive uh, as well. Welcome, Zardoz. We were talking a lot about 3D printing earlier. Definitely could have used your expertise, but it won't be the last time we have that discussion. Uh, Keith Bishop was just added to the Avengers today. Cool. Okay, it's ultimate. Nice. And again, that's a nice thing that obviously that Marvel can do. So if they're going to do an action figure of a character from a movie, but they don't have the the likeness for Jeremy Renner or they don't want to deal with it, they would say, uh, what do we got from the comics that we can use instead? Oh, we'll use this one. This one also came... So he's got a hand crossbow. He has two pistols that I have in his holsters. And then he's got this weird backpack. So he also came with like some really goofy, uh, something like this. I think it had two projectiles that fit in his quiver. 
and then some sort of big other goofy thing he could hold. Oh, there goes his. I guess it just rests in his hand. That's fine. Yeah, those hot toys people are crazy. The only hot toys I like, and I've talked about this before. The only hot toys I have are uh, were review samples that I was lucky enough to get, and those are just here because I'm too lazy to pack them up and try to sell them. <laughs> like I said, Zardoz, we will 100% talk about 3D printing again. I hope things went well at the doctor's. Uh, so yeah, so we got. Our masked friends here, Hawkeye and Winter Soldier. Where is... And to compare what they did with the, the mini... Again, with the mask on... Keep your mask on. Hey, it's a good. These are great. these are great examples for 2020. Keep your mask on. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get in a mystery box. Cool. Yeah, and I can. I'm sure I can find some some good guns to go with this, or maybe a, maybe a cap shield. Can you do that thing where he when he catches it and he just holds it? I could probably make that work. The arm is good. It's got a lot of texture to it. Oh, and then oh, I threw that package all the way across the room. Uh, the back of it it only advertised these uh, these mission whatevers. Uh, no other figures in the wave but obviously there were there was a captain america I'm trying to remember what other figures were actually in this in this specific line eh, i don't remember that's fine Get those guys. all right what is next oh yeah so the the mystery things that we were looking at before well we didn't fully open it but Hasbro was nice enough to send me a review, well, figures.com, but a review copy of the new Drizzt Do Erden action figure. So I will be reviewing it and then open it all the way. Uh, and then we got a cool 3D printed Zentradi shuttle from Robotech, uh, which we'll look at more on Friday as I clean it up and begin work on it. Let's do... Yes, exactly, the purple one. And I, I, I mentioned that, but it, it's okay. It's, it's all right. There have, been, there have been other versions, but, you know, purple is... Purple something. Also, again, if you do an action figure that's in even a 6-inch scale, even in a 12-inch scale, think about if you paint that face black, like actual jet black, it's going to be really hard to see the details unless you do a ton of extra paint work on top of it with lighter colors for highlighting and like really subtle masking. It's going to be really tough to get that detail. So separate from the the more general uh, issues of how do we portray Drow with you know with what colors, you know it's just it's it's something you got to think about when you know as far as actual production of the toy. I know you've all been waiting for me to open up more of My Little Pony toys. And you're here on the right day. So these were from the first line of individual card-backed ponies. So first they did a bunch of these in the blind bags, um, which were great. Super amazing selection of characters. Um, also great because there was actually a code stamped on those packages and of course the internet was immediate in uh, 
giving us collectors listings of which codes went to which character so you could just get the ones that you wanted. <laughs> Not that I ever did that and cherry picked my figures. But um, yeah, so in this first uh, first line of, like I said, individually single packed, um, it was themed for the Apple family and the Peach family. So these happen to all be Apple people. So we have Apple Fritter, Jonah Gold, and Apple Strudel. Obviously, they're all named for different, uh, either different <laughs> Apple varieties or Apple dishes. And they did some fun things with these. There were some new sculpts. Now, this line also, and they we're still dealing with Hasbro because most things are Hasbro. Uh, epic, epic amounts of reusing sculpts and you gotta do it you always gotta do it but these were cool because some of them have unique sculpts but a lot of them have unique accessories that they added onto it so like this little i don't know what you i when it gets to pony uh <laughs> clothing and accessories i i don't know all the technical terms <laughs> Oh, Zardoz, do I collect these? Uh, if I can move the camera, <laughs> I would show you. Yes, I have a lot of these ponies. I do not have them all, but I have a lot of them. So again, we had actually our accessories. And they did really cool stuff because, look, they have built-in little plastic bands that are clear. So they'll actually stay on. And of course, they have little cut ears cut out. So, I mean, yes, you can see the band, but it's clear. So, you know, from a little bit away. Can't really tell. Um, Arsenal Roy 2K, I will rise to that challenge. Well, it's big on him, but <laughs> yeah, it's hit. Oh. There we go. Yeehaw! <laughs> there's a there's a one piece character, right? Who has a like an oversized pink hat? I don't know. I never, I never read or watched. And again, even if you're not a big fan of the of the show, these toys are fantastic. Uh, they were inexpensive. They did... I'm trying to think of how many unique waves of these kind of figures they did. So again, the first one were mainly the Apple family and the Peach family. The second series was all related to Nightmare Night, essentially their Halloween. So you had f characters dressed up in costumes. The third one was like a, like a silly version of everybody where they had like practical joke kind of stuff. Was that the last one before this line ended? So again, just like little things. And what they did with these is obviously you can tell that the body is all one piece. This little thing is added. And then the heads are a separate piece that are glued on. They're not articulated. So when it came time to reusing molds and reusing parts, they could interchange different bodies with different heads and obviously repaint them and just crank out endless different versions of the same molds. And if you did watch the show, almost all of the pony bodies are just the exact same thing with different colors and then some other details. It just happens to be that all three of these are Earth ponies as opposed to the Pegasus and the, um, uh, what you call it, unicorn ponies. And also the alicorn ponies, which are the princesses. We could do a whole deep dive in the lore of My Little Pony, if people would like one day. And of course, they do all have their cutie marks which are the symbol that uh, it's sort of, it's part destiny, part uh, visible manifestation of what your 
good at. There have been some really interesting discussions about that online and like what it means to have a cutie mark which determines your career forever. The packaging, actually, I didn't mention on these. Hey, everybody, welcome. Packaging is interesting, right? We've got the sort of the, the generic logo up here, which, and then, again, the color scheme on these changed over the years depending on what the series was. We get the name. There's a little bit of artwork for each individual character. And then the back is just a lot of text. And it's a popular thing going back in sort of toy history to have these triple language cards. So you have everything in, well, in this case, four languages, because you have it in English, in French, in Spanish, and in, what am I looking at here? Well, yeah, and then there's just a whole bunch of different languages. But essentially, the more language you can pack onto one card, the more countries you can sell this toy without having to make different packaging. So that's why you have that. Yeah, and exactly. It is all just legal information. Uh, the, diff the different offices for Hasbro in different countries and all of that sort of thing. Yeah, so it's... Uh, it's not exactly an attractive <laughs> packaging, but it gets the job done. And you can, again, they can sell it in a bunch of different countries. The mythology of My Little Pony, yes. Well, I, 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 like I said, we could definitely go into that. Kind of like a caste system you were born into, but more individual. Yeah. And a little bit of pony eugenics. That, um, that's also accurate. So Apple Strudel here. He's an older fella. He's he's seen and done a lot in his lifetime. He's got the pretty sweet mustache and beard there. So now this outfit is a whole separate piece that should be able to pop off. Okay, we're getting naked here. You ready? Oh, <laughs> he's... He's very scrawny. <laughs> no, that's that's uh, that's sculpted on. Now here they did go a little bit cheap and did not print his cutie mark on his body, just on his outfit. But again, like I'm not going to display him naked, so it's okay. <laughs> He's so scrawny. But I definitely give them kudos for making pony clothing that's as easy to take on and off as that and still looks, you know, decent. Obviously, you're going to have that gap there, but... <laughs> and then he has this glorious hat. I mean, that is just a fine fellow... Oh, no, Squirrel, I absolutely watched My Little Pony. Uh, I didn't get all the way to the end of the series. I got... One day I will. But uh, but yes, no, I definitely watched it. And I loved the comic books for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Um, I got... I collected and read those for the first few years, at least. They started to branch out, and they had a bunch of different comic book lines, and it got to be too much. But... Um, the comic books were so so good, uh, and I'm not not speaking. I'm not not being silly. Genuinely, the comic books were really really good, and they were written for me because they were packed. Not only were they well written and interesting and funny and all that, but uh, packed with references to everything that I talk about. Everything in this room, there was literally an issue of the My Little Pony comic book that has references to 
Doctor Who. Well, a lot of them had Doctor Who references, but um, but one specific issue had an Evil Dead reference in it, in a My Little Pony comic book, which I just thought was really rad. Yeah. So again, when a pony is born, that pony does not have a cutie mark, and then when the pony reaches. Well, it depends. There are outliers, but generally, like early puberty kind of age, uh, the cutie mark appears. And it determines, yes, what that pony is going to be really good at. And then that becomes what the pony's job is going to be. And uh, it's, it's a whole thing. And then we deal, especially on the show, with young ponies who... Uh, <laughs> who are late bloomers in getting their cutie mark and become very concerned about when it's going to happen and what it's going to be, which you can take to be an allegory for, again, for any sort of puberty-related issues and concerns. Uh, but yeah, they, they did a pretty good job handling all that, that sort of stuff. But yes, once you get your cutie mark, though, it... It pretty much does determine what your life is going to be. Um, and most ponies are okay with that and just go along with whatever whatever it shows them. Late late bloomers, yes. Again, it's it's very uh you can read a lot into into those things in different ways. The movie wasn't great, but again, with that kind of stuff, it's like they it was the, the the team behind the cartoon, but then other people got involved and they crammed in a bunch of new characters so they could have Hollywood actors play a bunch of voice parts. And, you know, that stuff is never never as true to the core as, uh, as the show is going to be. Um, we're not going to get to it today, but I also dug out... Yes, I, I am a purist. What would my cutie mark be? Oh, man. I don't know. It's a, it's a great question. I've thought about it a lot. <laughs> it would probably be a little tiny, uh, like a little tiny display case <laughs> for all the crap I collect. And again, sometimes they are, sometimes it's like a specific job. Um, and sometimes it's just more... Uh, uh, like an like um, representative of yeah of like a hobby or something that they're into, or something they're good at or something that they enjoy. An Emperor's Children symbol that uh, that would work. So for another day, possibly next week, um, I've got this weird, this weird thing. So when Mega Blocks, well, when it was Mega Blocks, it's now Mega Constructs. We're doing their Halo toys. Um, and I've showed before, I have some random, uh, oh, uh, Zardoz, you're talking about Pony Hammer? Search that on, on Google. There's so much Pony Hammer out there. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot. There's some really amazing My Little Pony Warhammer artwork. Uh, it, yes, there's some that goes into territory that we don't want to talk about, but, um, there's like some genuinely really great artwork that people have done so there was these halo things um again i don't know any of the characters or what kind of crap this is and the gimmick for this was we've got three sets each one can build a character and a little piece of terrain that does something or if you get all three you can combine all three into one of these booster frames which looks Worth at least putting together and seeing what it looks like. Individually, this thing is kind of cool. These are, I mean, this is, this is garbage. Like, it's a little tiny, I mean, what is, what is that? I'm sure it actually is something. Does it say? UNSC Marine. Oh, okay, it's a command and control console. So yay, kids, run out, tell your parents, get you the console toy. 
I, I guess. This one is... This is a Forerunner Terminal. Now, look, I'm sure these appear in the games and do something, but in toy form... Oh, my goodness. That baby is not having a good morning. But in toy form, this is just awful. Like, why... why this should not be its own separate toy. It's just a gimmick to make you buy more things to be able to put together the, the cool part. But as you see, I got these on clearance, so it's all good. Uh, yes, this is a... Promethean Alpha Crawler with Forerunner Terminal, which is not as bad as the console, but still pretty bad. And then finally, the best one clearly is the UNSC Spartan EVA with Hangar Deck. But that's kind of a cool thing. I like the tubes. So again, on a future episode, maybe next week, um, we'll build this stuff. As you've seen before, I mostly have the drop pod kind of stuff from the Halo world. I also have, they have these uh, robot suits. I think, I think it's called the Cyclops. I don't know if there are any Halo experts here. But I have four or five of these in different colors and different designs, which are kind of cool. They're a little short to proxy as a as an Invictor war suit, but uh, but you know, depending on who you're playing with, you could, because yeah, these open up and there's a pilot inside. <laughs> the thing from Avatar is I'm dumber looking. Uh, yeah, I mean at least in at least in block form, it's. I imagine in video games this thing does look a, a little bit cooler, but yes, in this form it's a little. It's a little chunky. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with me on Toy Tuesday. Got to look at some some ponies, some Winter Soldier, Bane, uh, Drizzt. That review is probably not going to go up till next week. Um, I've got a lot of work to do on it, and uh, but it should be good. I'm excited to talk about it because again, I've I've read I've read the character for a long time. I do have so again in addition to this silly thing, I do have a bunch of Drizzt miniatures that they've made over the years that I can show um, some other not quite Drizzt miniatures, but essentially, so that'll be good to to get all those for photography. And yeah, I got to see if I have any cat things that I can do for for uh, comparison shots with Gwen Wavar. I'm sure I, I'm sure I can find something. Yeah, exactly. Dark Dark Elf Warrior. Or again, even in, in the unpainted miniatures, sometimes it's just like, here's an elf ranger. But suspiciously with two scimitars. Hmm. What could it be? Let's see. Is anybody else online to raid? Let's take a look. As it is going. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back with Warhammer Wednesday. And then tomorrow afternoon, Myths and Video Games with Pete, where we are going to play Zork 2. On stream, live, we will be playing Zork 2. Not familiar with Zork 2? Join the club but it'll be great. All I know is it was the first game ever where you could pet the dog, as we found out in Emma's trivia two weeks ago, or three weeks ago. Will my mom be there? I, I don't know, maybe, sometimes. <laughs> she pops in from time to time. Uh, okay, no rating today. I gotta find, I gotta find more people who stream in... The morning in the late morning Pacific time to follow and to raid. Um, I know sometimes hyper's on, and, but not so much today. Okay, um, I gotta get going. So see everybody tomorrow. Have a great Tuesday, everybody, and bye bye.